record on this computer. It says we are now recording. Thanks everyone and welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and let's look at the agenda together. All right, so what you'll see here is, is the, uh, the agenda for today. We, as an agenda review, we'll talk about open action item first, action items first, then Java 11 status check, Google Summer of Code with Natasha, Abuja, uh, Abu, uh, I'm sure I'm butchering it, and Oleg talk about Google, Google Summer of Code. I apologize, I will yet get it. Um, I don't know that we will get to YAML configuration because I'm not sure the people we need, but we also wanted to allow time for a presentation on custom war packager from Oleg. Any other topics we need to put into the agenda? Okay, I'll take that as, as no. So past action items, we've still got the to-do for me to submit the JEP for a Docker operating system support. Sorry, that hasn't happened yet. Oleg, I think the JEP for Windows support policy is also open. Uh, JEP is open. JEP is not open. Oh, right. Sorry. Yes. The action item remains. Great. Okay. Uh, and on the code signing infrastructure, as far as I understand it, Olivier has been, been at, le at least discussing with Alex, but no further progress that I'm aware of. Yeah, I guess uh, it's uh, in progress and it depends on code of previous automation. So mm. once we have a code of previous automation flow, it could be one of the next steps. Great. All right. Okay. So, so is it okay if I note that that um, depends on whoops depends on core release automation project? Yeah, we had a discussion about that on Tuesday at the infrastructure meeting. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Baptiste. Sorry to be late. Uh, thank you for being here. So then on the community bridge project, Oleg, anything you want to report there? Uh, we had a discussion about community bridge just uh, one hour before uh, at the advocacy meeting. So generally I presented uh, what we have there and we have, uh, well, we have interest uh, from other folks uh, to get it running. And my plan is to have a number of sample uh, projects supported there, uh, some for documentation and some uh, for other topics. So if anybody is interested to post a project idea there, uh, I'm ready to press it. Because I already set up a test account and we can uh, do it uh, now. Great, so the docs could submit things into that community bridge account? With your yeah, yeah right, and uh, we are going to discuss it tomorrow. But yeah, generally we can do that. Excellent, thank Same, you. I'm not sure whether Alex is joining today, but yeah, if he does, uh, community pitch is also an option we can press it with. Great, thanks very much. Next topic then, Al, uh, Oleg, do you want to lead out on a discussion on Java 11? You want, should we have others take it? Uh, sure, Batista, do you want to do that? Or would you prefer me to do that? Uh, I don't feel strongly, so the point today was, I mean, I can do it. Uh, you, you, and I will be letting you rest a bit because you're, you're already uh, leading a lot of things. Um, so I think what we wanted to say today is kind of clarify uh, slash officialize even more even if so uh, the Java 11 support for Jenkins is now considered done. Uh, we've been publishing, as far as I remember now, two months ago, I think, a blog entry article on the Jenkins.i website um, celebrating the Java 11 support on Jenkins. So and last was it? 
Monday already, so four days ago, we finally actually migrated the uh, uh, ci.jenkins.io instance to Java 11 runtime. So given this, uh, we consider, so uh, for people watching, there was a Java, uh, Java, <laughs> Jenkins enhancement proposal, a JEP 211, I think. Uh, yeah, was so yeah, in the bottom. Yeah, so Jen, J, J, JEP 211 um, was about, you know, that initiative and i think um we can declare i think the final step which is basically uh getting back to normal flow and entering the usual flow like people reporting bugs and we fix them uh, so because because since we've deployed and announced that since the last even the preview in December, last December, or mid-December, uh, we didn't see outstanding bugs really unfixable or concerning. The only one really was, I think, about around laxity, which is considered a fixed issue right now. Um, and so, yeah, bottom line, um, Java 11 support is ready. We are closing the outstanding project around that. I, there's a strong Type typing noise somewhere. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I was distracted a bit by the noise, and I, but that that's surprising because I'm Jerry doing a lot of noise. <laughs> so uh, we can consider the Java 11 support initiative on Jenkins done, and we are back into normal maintenance mode. Right, I did it. Sorry. Yeah, just uh, to add uh, some context to that, as a part of JEP 211, uh, we had post-release uh, support period uh, by Java 11 support team. Uh, basically, to me, but uh, Ramon, uh, Adrian, and the several other folks who are on the other The plan was to have uh, three months uh, support uh, since the first LTS release, so basically it's completed now. Um, and all other uh, parts of quality from Java have been completed. So we have uh, test automation, ATH, basically, we have everything we use this plant as a part of it. So I think it's it's actually Mark working, and so you're you're doing a great job writing notes, Mark. But I think there's an issue with your mic, and the mic is like probably just on the keyboard, <laughs> or something like this. <laughs> yes, sorry about that. So let me <laughs> let me. I I fear that we'll just have to have somebody else take notes. My keyboard is obviously too noisy for the meeting. So sorry. <laughs> I was about saying that I will be making notes, but then I realized that it's not going to be any better. <laughs> so, so I, I will I will periodically mute and unmute myself so that so that I can take notes as people are talking. Thanks very much. By the way, I think this is such a point of pride for us. We should be so delighted with the results of Java 11 in this project. What an amazing thing you've done as a team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> and the main props go to um, Oleg, I would say, because he's been doing oh, yeah. a lot of work. Pre, pre what an amazing amount. Thank you. Well, so, I wouldn't be able to do it alone, for sure. So yeah, we've had something like 50 contributors in the announcement right. post. Uh, so yeah, it uh, was actually a huge project uh, for the Jenkins community. And, uh, yeah, congratulations. So yeah. Natasha, well, I think you're the next one, unless there's anything else on Java 11, I think you're the next one for our discussion yeah. topic. Okay. Um, good morning, yeah. everyone. Um, so yeah, I've been I've started um, my Google Summer of Code project. So um, last week we had kind of tried to look at you know what it would take to um, I guess like pull the plugin manager out from core, which is obviously uh, very difficult, and I think um, probably too much for this project right now. But um, so I've kind of switched gears a little bit. Um, and right now I'm working on um, converting the uh, uh, install plugin uh, bash script um, to Java. So I have a repository I can send you. And we're still kind of in the process of moving that. So let me see. 
And I worry some to... are creating cover links in the meeting also. Okay. So, so yeah, yes. if you don't, you don't uh, need to make links, but if you want to screen share in order to show something, oh. uh, feel free to do so. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, sorry. I'm still figuring out how to use Zoom. So. Uh, so in order to screen share, if you want to do so, uh, Mark so, should stop screen sharing and then uh, you will have a share button activated in the bottom. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, how do I stop sharing, Oleg? I'm sure there's a, uh, a control somewhere. On the top, uh, there is a screen sharing status bar or something like that. So basically, you need to, uh, to click uh, uh, so stop there. I see the meeting controls. Now, oh, there it is. Got it. Stop share. Found it. Thank you. <laughs> Natasha, okay. you're not the only one <laughs> still learning Zoom, clearly. Okay, great. Uh... Okay, um, so can everyone see that? Yeah, you did it. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Uh, so, uh, yep, so I don't have like a, a demo or uh, anything yet, but um, basically um, this is the repository um, and I'm kind of in the process of uh, moving it from mine. So I had some questions about that. I don't know if this is, if we should, do that now or if we if you guys want to continue with the meeting and then I can uh, maybe uh, sync up with somebody after and um, they can help me finish moving everything um, so yeah uh, yeah so I guess that's like all I <laughs> wanted to share I don't know if anyone has any questions or um, input or anything actually that's yep. that's Go ahead, Oleg. Yeah, I just wanted uh, to reiterate a bit about um, and the, about the community value of this project because yeah, we have a lot of uh, problems related to plugin management in Jenkins components, uh, especially ones in the scope of this seek, for example, Docker packaging. And it would be really interesting to have this project so that we can streamline uh, plugin management across components and maybe get some added value features. So this is uh, where it comes from, and there is already a lot of interest stakeholders. For example, the Jenkins configuration is called plugin folks. They are also interested to have this tool because yeah, due to some architectural issues, uh, managing plugins from uh, the plugin site isn't possible. So there is a lot of stories uh, for sim yeah, a lot of synergy opportunities for projects inside Jenkins. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing so you can have control back, Mark. You are mute, Mark. Thank you. I was talking very well and no one was hearing. If I shout loud enough, will you hear me across the ocean? So. <laughs> Next is performance testing for Jenkins plugins. Right, um, I'll share my screen in just one second. Well, now that means I have to again figure out how to stop sharing. <laughs> we are forcing you to get through that process so that it becomes natural. <laughs> I'm uh, sure I will eventually get very talented at doing that. Yeah, you know, that's the, the balance. The thing about continuous delivery, you know, if, if a release is painful, you know, every month, do right. it every day. And then it will become just not painful. <laughs> Okay, so is my screen visible? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, so I am working on um, a benchmarking framework for Jenkins using Java Micro Benchmark Harness for my Google Summer of Code project. So, what is so? Let me just start by what is Java Micro Benchmark Harness? Um, it's a, it's an open JDK project um, which is used to create um, benchmarks. Um, for languages on the JVM. So what it basically does is it starts up some warm-up iterations 
um, just to avoid um, compilation to machine language code um, when, it, when the benchmark is run. And after that, um, it runs the actual measurement um, iterations. So it allows us to measure the um, benchmark results in multiple ways, like average time, the number of operations per second, and single shot time, the time to um, just do one iteration without warm up, and multiple other things which are there, um, which you can see on the docs. Um, so what it basically does it, is it um, runs multiple forks of the JVM. Um, so that's running the entire process multiple times. Um, so we reduce the measurement error. Now, so how does this framework work? So um, it starts from your normal J unit tests. Um, so all the classes uh, which are annotated by JMH benchmark can be automatically found. And according to your, um, and for the benchmark, each fork of the benchmark, a temporary Jenkins instance is started. Now, um, you can either configure the instance using normal Java code, or you can use configuration as code. Um, both of these strategies um, can be seen in the role strategy plugin right now. So this is how a typical benchmark looks, looks like. So what we have, um, we uh, in Java micro benchmark harness um, to pass information to a running benchmark, uh, the only way possible to do is to have a state class. Uh, this state class is automatically instantiated during the benchmark runtime uh, by JMH. So for us, we have two methods. One of them is the setup method, and the other is the teardown method. So uh, for both of them, uh, they can be used to set up your resources and your instance uh, and do whatever you feel like for your benchmark. And so then your benchmark methods have to be annotated by benchmark to be found by Java micro benchmark harness and your benchmark code goes there. Now we can also use configuration as code. It's the same thing. Uh, instead of the JMH benchmark state here, you have to override the uh, configuration as code Java micro benchmark harness benchmark state. So the only thing here is that you have to provide a part to your configuration file. Um, so when the instance is started, it is automatically configured with using configuration as code. And you can run your benchmark here. Now, so the benchmark reports um, can be analyzed directly from your JUnit tests. Um, it returns a Java object, which you can analyze to either pass or fail the test. And you can have multiple things to be measured during one benchmark. The reports can be written to your disk and they can also be archived like we would be doing on a CI Jenkins instances. Um, uh, we would be taking JSON reports. So these JSON reports can uh, be either used by the JMH report plugin for Jenkins or they can uh, be used on the JMH visualizer website. I'll show an example later. Um, yeah, so this is what a sample of the visualized report looks like. Now, some challenges and bugs which are present here. Um, one of them is the test crumb issue, um, which was uh, refused to be marshaled uh, from configuration as code. That's uh, JEB 200. And the other thing is when the benchmark completes, uh, the Jetty server leaves straight threads, which causes um, the benchmark to run for 30 seconds. Um, so JMH waits for the instance to come uh, to cleanly exit, but it doesn't. So it forcefully kills it after 30 seconds. Now, um, these are all of my pull requests. Uh, I am now moving the code from the role strategy plugin to the Jenkins test harness, so it's available for everyone to use. And thanks. Cool. That is awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so Micro Harness, any questions from the attendees? That was absolutely wonderful. 
I think that's that's great. Yeah. So I didn't look actually at the PRs on different plugins. Are there are there about um, basically showing how to use it on various plugins on on generating best benchmarks on various tests? Or sorry to be asking dummy questions. I didn't look at those PR actually. So. Uh, we have some sample benchmarks in the role strategy plugin. I'll show them here. So, and after you've shown that, is there is there a way for me to, or is is the use of external processes like, for instance, command line Git, a, a threat to the accuracy of the benchmarks, or can the micro benchmark harness actually operate even with having processes forked and depending on the results from those processes? Uh, so what it basically does is it creates a fork after a benchmark has completed. So when multiple forks are run, it um, it basically eliminates the possibility for other processes to affect the benchmark results. Because we're taking so many iterations, it wouldn't actually matter. Ah, okay. So it's a multi. It runs multiple executions of the exact same test to gather a, a, a representative approximation of the actual performance. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, probably it's not a main, it's like in test. Yeah, I just got confused talking, <laughs> sorry. So let's just show you a benchmark, uh, possibly using configuration as code. So what we do here is, um, First, we actually verify during the setup that uh, the instance is actually correctly configured. And then after that, um, here what we do is for each thread, so um, JMH runs multiple threads, um, again, to ensure the correctness of the results. And what we do here, um, this is something related to the old strategy plugin. And we generate ACL objects, and we benchmark the time it takes. Yeah, and uh, you can see that in initialization, uh, so the yeah, Jenkins, uh, we use a thread local storage in order to keep authentication. So he uh, gets uh, initialized one on the thread uh, startup. The notation above. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for look, so thanks for seeing this. Oh, that marvelous demo. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, hopefully at some uh, point uh, we will get to the stage when uh, it's available as a part of a Jenkins test harness, so any plugin user can uh, just use it from there. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> I am sorry about my poor sorry. pronunciation of your name. I will keep trying. I will yet get it. Oleg, I believe the next topic, since we're not likely to talk YAML's configuration support, the next topic we'd configure a custom war packager. Rather than uh, me over sharing, do you want to talk to that or? Uh, yeah, I can uh, present that. So yeah, I think that uh, knowing more about customer packages uh, could be useful for the special interest group, and uh, it could be useful for Natasha because uh, uh, it also has its own implementation for plugin management. So yeah, I'll probably just share my screen and show it to you. And do you see my screen? Okay. Ed. Yes. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll just open one of my slide decks. We're not going to go through the entire slide deck with like this. Um, but yeah. Mm. Okay, so basically what's uh, the problem uh, with uh, Jenkins configuration management and other things that uh, yeah, there are too many options. For example, you can use JCast plugin, you can use uh, uh, Groovy hooks in order to initialize the configuration, you can uh, install plugins using plugins in Docker or by 
uh, applying uh, various configuration management tools uh, is definitely doable, but it, it takes a lot of time to uh, configure the stuff and to maintain the stuff. Uh, and uh, one of the questions, uh, would we have something different? Uh, because uh, uh, instead of do, having a lot of tools, we would have a single tool which just takes everything uh, and packages it uh, as a ready-to-fly uh, configuration. So basically, it's what a custom work package is about. Uh, historically, it started as a test automation tool for Jenkins because some of our test frameworks, like acceptance test hardness and plugin compatibility test, that then uh, they rely on uh, work files as input. And we needed to run these tests in uh, special environments. For example, if you want to test Artifact Manager as a free plugin, you need to run in AWS. And uh, in order to do that, you need to configure the plugin, um, and then uh, you need to run uh, existing uh, PCT tests. So uh, with custom work packages, we were just able to produce a word file which uh, has all this kind of self translation out of the box, and which uh, produces uh, ready-to-fly images. So it takes a configuration YAML, uh, which define uh, which course to take, which plugins to take, uh, which configurations to pass. Uh, then the customer packager as a tool just does the packaging and it can produce uh, three outputs. Uh, do you see the screen on the right? Uh, I mean, uh, here. Okay, uh, so customer packager can produce uh, three types of outputs. Firstly, it's Jenkins word files. Then it's uh, Jenkins Docker images, which are compatible with official uh, Jenkins Docker images. And also Jenkins file runner images uh, based on the same configuration. Um, and what uh, happens next? Yeah, uh, you can specify uh, what you want to take, and then uh, everything just uh, gets packaged, uh, and you get this image. So it sounds uh, pretty simple. And yeah, probably I'll just show a couple of demos. Okay. Uh, demo. Okay, let's uh, take a look at task demo. Okay, task is configuration stored. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the entire demo. And we have a package config of YAML file. This YAML file uh, defines what you want uh, to get uh, from Jenkins. Uh, so there are some metadata like bundle, uh, there are build settings which define which uh, Docker image we take as a base when we package a Docker image. Uh, then we pass a word file for Jenkins, we have pass a list of plugins, and we pass system properties and uh, Jenkins configuration as code YAML. In addition to that, you can uh, pass uh, Groovy hooks, uh, and if you want, uh, you don't necessarily have to pass release versions because customer packager also supports uh, building the plugins on the flight from uh, branches. Uh, you also can rewrite libraries. Uh, you can rebuild Jenkins core, for example, if you want to test with newer Jenkins remoting version. Uh, there are tweaks which allow to pass them. I am not showing them here, but yeah, uh, all the features are in place uh, and uh, they're documented in a uh, plugin uh, customer packager readme. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty simple configuration. The only thing which doesn't come in this YAML is another YAML for configuration as code. But for this particular demo, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, well, it's just a bunch of configurations, uh, for example, system message, some basic security setup, uh, role strategy plugin configuration. Uh, so similar to what uh, we have uh, in performance tests uh, when we configure role strategy. Uh, yeah, this is only ship-based security. And then if you want uh, to get uh, this image uh, running, you just go to the instance, make build. So make the build. Uh, um, okay. Okay, now make build. Okay, make files uh, are just my own production, but what it uh, does here, uh, make file actually takes uh, a custom work package as CLI tool. So currently custom work package supports CLI tool and it also supports Maven plugin. So if you want, you can use custom uh, work package as a part of the Maven flow. Also, we uh, offer official Docker images for custom work package where you can build the Jenkins inside. Uh, obviously, you cannot uh, build a Docker image today because it would be Docker and Docker. 
but it can produce your source configuration and then uh, you can just invoke Docker built inside. And then uh, when you're ready, so the image is just produced here and then uh, you get the output. So we have temp directory, uh, custom work package is Ryan, but basically what it does, uh, actually it's an elegant uh, wrapper on the top of various Maven plugins and uh, various tools. For example, here's a packaging state and you may see that uh, custom work packages just generates uh, uh, Jenkins bundle, bundle using Maven and then it uses um, uh, Maven in GPI plugin, this custom work in order to just build the bundle. But then it takes uh, this bundle again because we use uh, this bundle and we inject uh, JCASC uh, uh, scripts or Groovy hook scripts directly into the image. Um, and the same, we also can uh, overwrite the uh, system properties. For example, yeah, here we have uh, the built image. So you may see that uh, yeah, Jenkins YAML D is just injected in the Word file. Uh, we also modify, for example, WebXML because we take WebXML and uh, if you scroll in the bottom, you may see that yeah, it's not formatted well, but uh, yeah, what we do here is we just add additional XML entries for the right setup method. So we want to skip it, we inject it directly, and when Jenkins starts up, uh, you get uh, this configuration applied automatically. So here, yeah, it's still building. Mm, custom work package isn't really famous for quick builds, uh, but yeah, eventually it should produce something. So let's take a look what actually my uh, demo does. Uh, make file. Oh, uh, I uh, run Docker image there. So then if I run Docker image, so let's assume it builds uh, successfully and then uh, I can just uh, run my run command. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, it's not going to work in that way because I have written a proper make file. So, uh, okay. Mm. I think uh, it's not uh, something which we really need to go through, but uh, yeah, finally, once it completes, it produces you a Word file or Docker image or Jenkins file runner with all the configurations. Uh, so uh, you just get it running. Okay, this demo has no chance to complete in foreseeable future, I believe, because I wiped everything. And when I uh, screen share Zoom, I have uh, issues with uh, uh, pretty much everything. But yeah, for example, I can uh, show you a demo of Jenkins file runner. We have, uh, uh, yeah. so JFR, we have a demo called uh, say Jenkins. Uh, okay. uh, we have a Jenkins file runner. So Jenkins file runner can be also patched uh, by configurations code. And here, It's just uh, my run. So again, uh, there is uh, just a configuration package uh, by custom of packager, but here it uh, actually uses Jenkins file runner. And in this demo, we use some plugins like uh, pipeline utility steps, uh, which uh, gets configuration and uh, passes it uh, to the instance. Yeah, my Docker is extremely slow right now. Oleg, okay, just to be sure that the, yeah. the, the Jenkins file runner concept was one that I hadn't caught on to initially. It is that in order to execute a single pipeline, this has the elegance of it will start a, a complete Jenkins, run the pipeline, and then tear down the Jenkins. So it starts a lightweight Jenkins, executes yeah. my little pipeline, and then exits again. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you can see basically it happening here because uh, once customer package builds uh, the image, we just execute a Docker container. And this Docker container takes uh, our pipeline and just executes it here. Uh, so yeah, the, we have, yeah, probably I'll just open configuration as code. Um, okay. Yeah, so basically the source code uh, for my demo is just a uh, yeah, customer packager config. Uh, pretty much uh, same as before, it takes a number of plugins, uh, packages them. Uh, it doesn't uh, really need configuration as code here. 
um, so we do not pass the configurations. But here we take a Jenkins file runner, we build it here, and then we pass Jenkins file. And here you may see that, for example, that we use pipeline utility steps plugin, which is not included in the Jenkins by default. Uh, but yeah, this customer package will be later ready to apply instance uh, where you, all uh, the plugins are embedded, and hence you can execute this pipeline out of the box. And uh, if we go through that, uh, we have, um, yeah, so if you're interested to know more about Jenkins file runner, the, I have a slide deck about. Uh, uh, under the hood of serverless Jenkins, Jenkins file runner, and there is a recording uh, from Cloud Native Special Interest Group uh, where I was presenting this tool. But what might be interested uh, in for the platform seek and for whomever developing uh, Jenkins pipelines and pipeline libraries, uh, there is a project called CI Jenkins IO runner. Basically, this project is an emulation of CI Jenkins IO and Jenkins file runner mode, uh, and it supports commands like building plugin. So, for example, one of the demos in this uh, project is uh, just uh, building uh, local plugin. Uh, it's a fork of uh, local plugin source codes, but uh, yeah, there is no magic here. We just uh, build plugin, and Jenkins file runner can uh, really execute uh, this demo, and uh, it can execute this demo like it was doing in uh, CI Jenkins IO. So, pipeline libraries supported uh, a lot of Jenkins plugins is included, uh, like Finebox plugin and whatever. And you can run uh, this demo in order to really verify results and uh, to test the uh, pipeline library locally before you submit a pull request. Because yeah, for Jenkins project, you have uh, this issue is uh, Jenkins uh, info, Jenkins IO, sorry, uh, pipeline library. So yeah, we have uh, a pretty complicated pipeline library which we use for all projects uh, inside the Jenkins organization. So Natasha and every day you will be also using this pipeline library for your automation, I guess. And here we have steps like build plugin or whatever. But uh, we have a, a technical depth in our project, so we don't really have any kind of test automation or continuous integration mechanism be by default for this library. So that's why I developed some packages so that I was able to build and test uh, uh, the um, components locally and then uh, Probably we'll spend some time on integrating, on offering continuous integration for, for Python library here, maybe using Jenkins file runner or other tools available in the project now. But yeah, CI Jenkins file runner is something you could try if you want to see how custom work packages works for real use cases. Because yeah, it packages uh, the entire CI Jenkins IO with pre configuration and it packages it in a ready to fly demo. Okay. So, Oleg, on ci.jenkins.io, I'm accustomed to having Windows machines always available. How does, how does this operate in a context where it needs additional agents with special capabilities? Okay, so there are two answers for that. Uh, are you able to connect agents uh, from Jenkins file runner? Of course you can. For example, SSH, slaves, plugin, etc. So you can connect them. Moreover, Jenkins Vault, we were showing a demo about uh, having sidecar containers and Jenkins file runner, but this demo uh, depends on a pull request which haven't been integrated yet in the remote link. So yeah, there is a pull request which would enable uh, connecting uh, Jenkins to headless uh, uh, Jenkins masters. Uh, because our current problem is that uh, in order to connect a uh, general P agent, you need uh, to have a web interface available, and Jenkins file runner uh, obviously doesn't do that. So there are two workarounds. First is, um, for example, Apache Kafka plugin, uh, which is currently under development. Uh, there is a project by long in order to make it Kubernetes friendly in Google Summer of Code. Uh, but uh, yeah, also you can use SSH slaves and other launcher types in order to connect. Uh, so yeah, this is just one of the ways. Uh, but how do I do it in my case? Uh, in my case, I just updated pipeline library, to be honest, because I assumed that uh, for me, the most straightforward way is to support the uh, filtering of components. So here, minimal patches for Jenkins file runner support. And here, what uh, I do is, um, yeah, so here I just uh, check some system properties. 
And if we take a look at the uh, CI to say you run onto this uh, system properties just uh, set by customer packager and they inject it into Docker images. So each time we run, uh, we just skip uh, Windows builds because, yeah, pipeline libraries skip Windows. Well, it's probably not an elegant approach, but it works. Uh, but uh, yeah, good news is that uh, for Jenkins file runner, we actually CI Jenkins IO runner supports both Java 8 and Java 11 at least. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, test the Java 11 pipelines inside it as well. Excellent. Well, and, and I've used SSH agents with Windows machines already. So just the fact that you support SSH agents allows me to run, I think, just like it's another agent. That's cool. Yeah. Elegant. Very elegant. Yeah, right. So it might be a provisioning time, but yeah, SSH slaves can be configured via Jenkins configuration as code. So on startup, Jenkins will start uh, starting up these agents. Uh, your job uh, pipeline starts in parallel, uh, then uh, yeah, depending on the state, it will either wait for agent to be available or starts to be built immediately. But yeah, if everything works well, then you will get it executed on external agent. And obviously, it's completely your responsibility to ensure that the uh, multiple Jenkins file runner instances don't uh, collide with each other. Right, yeah. right. So as they as they consume, they need to somehow make themselves unique. Yeah. Yeah, right. So it's not a problem of Jenkins file runner. It's a problem of top level infrastructure. Right. So yeah, back to customer packager. Yeah, basically we had a blog post. There is a lot of demos in the repository. So if somebody is interested, uh, you can just take a look. Uh, what hurts there is, of course, plugin management, because uh, in Jenkins file runner itself, sorry, in customer packager itself, uh, plugin management is pretty weak, and uh, yeah, you can define it in YAML. But basically, in all my demos, I switched from YAMLs to POMXML definitions. Uh, so yeah, here, for example, see Jenkins IO runner, I define plugins uh, from POMXML. Uh, why I need that? Because I want to have uh, depend about enabled. So managing dependencies in Jenkins file runner, uh, well, it takes a lot of time. So I spent some time automating that. Uh, and here, here you may see that uh, there is depend about enabled. Uh, we have a go evaluation in the Jenkins community and depend about just submits a pull request. And then uh, once CI passes, for CI we have Jenkins file runner test hardness framework created by Evarist and Francisco when we were working on Jenkins file runner. And uh, yeah, basically all these patches get verified and then they get integrated. So yeah, I use POMXML in order to declare dependencies. And uh, I also use POMXML because uh, customer packagers implementation of plugin management uh, doesn't support the uh, upper bounds resolution. So it means that uh, if there is a transit dependency, I cannot guarantee that a proper version uh, gets uh, injected by customer packager. So instead of that, I use plugin POM because plugin POM ensures that. So I just used the Jenkins development tools in order to verify that uh, plugins are compatible. Uh, but once we have uh, plugin management uh, CLI tool, probably I would be able to get rid of that and use uh, this tool in order to verify compatibility of the plugins and maybe get some uh, extra features like uh, better security checks or whatever. Okay, any questions? None from me. Thank you very much, Oleg. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to try it out, just take a look at uh, the repository. And yeah, another use case which we might consider, again, for plugin manager tool, that actually a customer packager allows overriding uh, Jenkins core versions. For example, here it's a bit obsolete uh, implementation for that. Uh, well, it's, it doesn't even put. Uh, YAML here, it, it puts YAML here, I believe. Oh. Yeah. So here I actually use customer packager in order to uh, patch libraries. And what it means that if you had a library for plugin manager, you could uh, just inject it uh, in the Jenkins core using uh, this tweak and the customer packager will, would create uh, us an additional instance with embedded libraries. And then we will be able to do plugin management from Jenkins using uh, plugin manager tool. Well, 
until it is uh, just included into the course directly. If it happens, it would be cool. If not, uh, customer package it is a workaround. Oleg, in this example, you're listing a source location. Are we? Are you building from source, or no? You're grabbing yes. the artifact by ID. You're actually building from source. Yeah, so custom work package supports that. It can uh, build from source. It can uh, take a released version. It can take an incremental version. Why I need uh, it from source here? Because it's a demo of all latest, all latest. So basically, it's a bleeding edge demo, and I assure you, it's it bleeds a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can uh, use it in order to build uh, Jenkins from all recent components. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, for example, awesome, etc. There you go, some hacks with that. So basically, this demo needs to be rewritten because I have a new implementation in custom work packages, which is actually based on Jenkins properties. So here we just uh, replace patches, basically patches, but there is also a way to just uh, build a component and inject it a, a version of system properties. So for example, for remoting version, for step version, uh, we could use this approach instead. Uh, it's just an another demo, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow, that is brilliant. Thank you. Yep. So that's why the blog post was called "Build Your Own Jenkins" or something like that, because yeah, basically it's what you can do there. Yeah. Thanks very much, Oleg. That that is mm -hmm. an amazing piece of technology. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank so. You. In terms of our net, are there any additional comments you wanted to make with regard to alignment with the platform SIG? I know you'd mentioned for Natasha how this, this might be of help to her. Are there others? I can see how the technique can help me in my validation of the Git plugin, for instance. So, so you've inspired me to try it. Yeah, so regarding validation of Git plugin, I can show you something because, yeah, uh, custom work packager uh, isn't just. Uh, a single tool. We, as I said in the beginning, we created it for um, test automation. So if you go to pipeline library, uh, there is um, a library step created by Raul. Uh, Raul is a maintainer of plugin compatibility tester and he's also an active contributor. So there is a step called the essentials test. Historically, it comes from Jenkins Essentials, which later became Jenkins Evergreen. Uh, but effectively, it's a tool which allows doing integration testing. And what it does here, it can package uh, a custom work using a custom work packager. For example, take custom versions of plugins, custom configurations, and then you can uh, run this uh, package through acceptance test harness and through plugin compatibility tester. So using custom work packager and using this pipeline library step, for example, you can use it uh, this uh, library method for Git plugin and to verify uh, it against, uh, let's say, uh, Git, uh, GitHub branch source uh, plugin source code. So you can uh, run a GitHub uh, branch source uh, test suite with your new underdevelopment version of Git plugin and you can get uh, results so that, uh, well, that at least nothing breaks using plugin compatibility tester. And same for acceptance test harness, which is rather uh, targeting UI tests right now. Excellent, thank you. So, so I assume custom war packager, the results also give me something that I could execute. Does it have a presentable UI as well? It does, doesn't it? If I wanted to look at it and explore with it while it's running, or does it, does it exit immediately after, after startup? Uh, are we talking about uh, plugin compatibility tester or about uh, a custom yes. work packager? Custom work packager. Yeah, in general. custom work packager is entirely CLI tool, but okay. it can uh, reduce uh, Jenkins work files, which uh, just uh, implement standard Jenkins work files with web interface, etc. So you get standard uh, Jenkins work file, which you can uh, use, or standard Docker image, or Jenkins file runner if you don't run everything of that. Uh, regarding uh, potential synergy, for example, if you talk about benchmarking, uh, yeah, for example, we, this essentials test, um, we could also use it for benchmarking purposes. Because uh, yeah, we run plugin compatibility tester here, and plugin compatibility tester inside, it actually runs Jenkins test hardness. 
So, for example, when a BD finishes migration of frameworks, when we have some automation tests, we could probably do the same in order to do some performance tests as a part of our integration testing if you want. So, yeah, custom work packages could be used for that as well, but yeah, it's a kind of moonshot. But yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. So basically what we would need to do with that is pass a conditional profile, which you can pass through metadata, is minus D benchmark, uh, I believe. And once you pass that, uh, benchmark tests would be also executed uh, for uh, plugin compatibility tester. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. And Oleg, that I believe was our last topic on the agenda. If there are no other topics, I would propose that we call an end. Are there other topics that need to be discussed in the meeting? Not from my side. All right, thanks everyone. I will archive a copy of the, of the video and we'll post it. Um, also, next meeting will be in two weeks, same time. Thanks very, very much. Yeah, I'll try to get it with us on the next meeting because we have open story about uh, multi architecture Docker images, and right. yeah, I'm not sure where they, what, how to press it there. Well, and I will talk with Alex Earl because now that he is in, usually the U.S. school year has ended by now. He may actually be available in two weeks. Yeah, right. Uh, and yeah, it's also something. So when we uh, switched from Java 11 uh, to plugin installation tool, I want to add that uh, yeah, actually installers we're going to include it into Java 211 scope. So it means that although we applied some packages, for example, for Debian packaging, etc., Windows installation manager, so the MSI installer is still uh, somewhere on our plate, and we need to do something about that. Let's see. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.